down the hammer and pick up the pencil. You're about to listen to the Savvy Radio Show. Learn from real life real estate investors, experience revealed with the Savvy Landlord as your host. What's going on, Savvy Investors? Hopefully you're doing good. Hopefully you're enjoying this wonderful, beautiful, off-the-chain weather. Get outside with your family. Go take a walk. Do something. It's beautiful. (laughs) It's funny that I'm saying that hypocritical because I'm in the closet right now trying to drop a podcast. I want to keep up on the on the content on a regular basis. I get a little hiccups here and there uh, because of growth. Um, Lately, just just so you know where I'm at, uh, I'm getting uncomfortable, getting comfortable, getting uncomfortable. Yeah. Right now, (laughs) I got three major projects closing production let's just call it what it is i don't know tiny houses in in chattanooga tennessee with my homeboy fun we just uh drilled our well we got revenue already rolling we have our first hip camp that's exciting but it's also nerve-wracking because we're buying things that are hundreds of thousands of dollars or up to with this kabata thing and drilling stuff and moving trees and paving ways for tiny home. So it's exciting. That's a stressor. And it's out of my comfort zone in another state with uh, an amazing partner. Thank God for that. And then I'm breaking ground here pretty soon in Midwest City with some flex space. I'm really stoked about that. And then I got another project just got blessed in my face. Uh, Maybe I got really inspired if you heard the last podcast with Eddie Mack about doing assisted living. And uh, I just got some five acres dropped on my lap in the middle of the city. And I'm doing a ton of due diligence on that. So, I mean, real due diligence. And that's actually one of my things today to break off. This this podcast is just straight raw. Nothing's organized. I've been, every time I come across something that has touched me, impacted me, or where I failed, I just take quick notes And then I try to organize it later and try to drop a podcast. I just want to keep this ball rolling, keep it hot, keep it fresh. And uh, I I don't have time, seriously. So I just wrote stuff down. This is not in order. I'm going to stutter a few times. I'm going to say something I probably shouldn't have said. Uh, You're going to have to work with me. You're going to have to deal with me. Uh, I apologize in advance. And I never apologize, but I just, I should apologize, right? (laughs) But not apologize in advance. But, uh, you know, this this is new trying time for me getting uncomfortable, getting used to getting uncomfortable. And it's just it's amazing. And I I actually wrote some notes down. I probably should do a podcast on that. Getting amped up for the leadership summit, writing a class on how to buy an apartment, getting in the commercial. Uh, That is just tough in itself. Uh, Jumping jumping from single family to commercial. It sounds sexy. It is nerve wracking. You really do add another zero and or two and you know i'm just just riding along uh trying to deal trying to deal with it so if you're in that game give me a whoop whoop uh give me a thumbs up i don't know text me uh that's where i'm at if you're struggling with something let your boy know because uh we can we can struggle together but let's just start off this is one i wrote down a while back but the other day i i dropped my son um to a football game and we got there early. And I'm telling you right now, you need to get there early. Whatever you're doing, get there early. Get to the event early. If you're getting to a meetup, if you're getting to a banker's meeting, if you're going to look at a house, get there early. I always love to get to a, a viewing or a showing, and I park two houses down, and I just watch. I just see how people operate. How do they pop out of their car? I get to look by their car. And I learn a lot just by watching people. And... When I was just thinking about the Savvy Radio Show and what kind of content can I deliver, I brought my son to the football game, and we got there like mega early. They haven't even opened the gate. And we we backed in, and we're just watching people just chilling. My son doesn't know what's going on. And I see this dad roll in, all amped up, rushed, whipping his son out of the car, slamming on his pads, putting his shirt on. And I'm like, my son's already dressed, already, you know, ready to roll in the truck, ready to go play. And and the point is, is that there's no need for all that stress. There's no need to get all wild in the parking lot. You can be prepared. And so that's lesson number one today in the trenches. Just an observation. Get there early. Get there. The the, the early bird gets the worm. It's the real deal. Get there early. Even if someone's hosting the event your way early, 
and used to make fun of those people that are there thinking they're buttering up the people. No, they're the ones that are getting the worms. Get there early. Get to the deal early. All right, that's lesson number one. Number two, get dialed in. I mean, I'm talking about I, I've seen somebody in front of my eyes be chubby dub uh, all over the place. And then he just he knew exactly what to do in his nutrition, his regiment, his discipline, his plan. And I just see the dude just get ripped real fast. Now, not, this is not my goal or desire. And I, I don't think that everyone should be ripped. But I just admire people that that get just fit and just do it right. And, and what it is, is this getting dialed in. You've got to get dialed into you, not for somebody else. But I've noticed that I've gotten dialed into my schedule. Let me give you a quick example is I used to get up really, really early. I'm talking five o'clock and I love to read. And then I would kind of get waked up, read, get the word in and then go work out and then hit the day. And I was just always on fire. I mean, by noon, I, I just destroyed the business and got it all ponied up, ready to roll and pass it on to somebody else, a general manager or a staff member. And now I've, I've changed my schedule because of my kids. I realized I only have this limited time and I noticed it's really critical in the morning. And usually some of them are cranky. Some of them need a affection. Some of my kids just need love. Some of them just needs me to sit by them. Some of them needs, daddy, can you give me some butter? I mean, I'm just doing some crazy stuff. And I've, I had to force myself, not what I want, what can I do temporarily? So I had to get dialed in on my schedule. And I think I just got dialed in on my schedule. So I wake up, I still read at about six o'clock and I'm waiting for the little ones. My boy wakes up at 615 and I'm hanging out with him, trying to grow him. And then I just, and then they get on the bus at 730. Then I go work out and then it's on like Donkey Kong. So I, and then, then I realized I can't get Orange Theory in there. And I'm like, I'm bummed. I, I'm paying for this. Orange Theory works. You just get, uh, man, you just, I'm telling you, Orange Theory's off the chain. I need to own the franchise one day. Maybe be a spokesperson. I don't know. Come somebody hear me. Holla. Anyway, and I, I started working out at 3 o'clock. So now I got to get on. I got to get on it. 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock. That's my window. And then I know subconsciously what I can do, what production I can do, who I can call, how I can call them. I'm dialed in and I'm focused. I ask you to do the same thing. Constantly adapt and work out as much as possible and work your schedule, adapt, work your schedule, dial in. What works for you? What food works for you? What pre-workout works for you? What's your nutrition? What you eat? How does it, you know, I know I eat some cheese and my, I break out. So dial in. What, what makes you tick? What makes you amazing? Here's another one. Contract for deed, photos before and during the documents. Okay, this is just something I, I failed on. I had a contract for deed go bad, and they bounced out, didn't pay, disappeared. And I realized I don't have this on my checklist. I, it says photos, but I think you need to get, when, you, when you're when you dealing with a contract for deed, and if you don't know what that is, you can Google it up on my uh, on my all my events or whatever, all my podcasts, I should talk about it before. And if I haven't text me and I'll do a whole podcast on contract for deed. Basically I'm, I'm selling the property on terms, kind of like an owner finance, but not they're paying it off. When they finally pay it off, I give them the property debt free. It's a contract between me and them. Uh, then I'm going to honor the contract. You're going to honor the contract. And if you fulfill the contract, you get the property contract for deed. The deed is the property, blah, blah, blah. You feel me? And I had one go bad, and I haven't really had one go bad. And, I, you know, and I've been hiring an attorney for everything now just to double-check everything. And I'm like, man, I really failed on this one. And I think I got off uh, smooth sailing. They bounced out. And, you know, I called the attorney and tried to work out the foreclosure, called the accountant, tried to book the foreclosure. But I realized, I'm like, what photos can I attach to this foreclosure and what is the expenses that I've occurred and how could I prove those expenses if I got audited? And so that's something that, you know, I definitely recommend you probably know this already. If you've been on, if you listen to my show or if you see me speak before savvy landlord, blah, 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 take as many photos as possible, get organized, get a Google phone, whatever it takes. Okay. So here's another one. Number four. I don't know what number this is all organized. This is just thrown up on a piece of paper or actually on my phone. But you got to think big, 
Okay. Now I know Donald Trump said this. I know a lot of people say this. Think big, think, 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 think big. But here, this is something that I noticed just recently with somebody that I'm coaching. So I'm coaching this dude, and this guy, he, he quit his job. He's making four G's a month. He's happy, but not exactly where he wants to be. That's why we connected. That's why I'm taking this dude to the $10,000 a month level. We're going to make it work. It's a business. You got to run this business like a champ. And then he comes into the, his, his session with me, and he's like, yeah, I, I, I can't. I, I'm going to turn off uh, uh, my marketing. What? I, you know, I'm going out of town for a, for a fishing trip for a month. <laughs> and uh, I can't, I'm not able to take the calls. I'm like, this is your problem. And so then I was like, well, use a, um, a phone answering service. Yeah, I've done that before and it didn't work. See, you're not thinking big. That company that I mentioned may not be the right company for you. But if you're ever going to scale, if you're ever going to go to the next level, you can never even say, I can't do it. I, I was talking to another entrepreneur the other day, and he's like, he's just, man, it's my sweet spot. We got too many events, and we got, we're going, you know, we can't handle it. We don't have enough. You're not thinking big. Think bigger. When you have an obstacle in front of you, think bigger. Even if it's just so cheeseball as, you know, the apprentice back in the day when, they, you know, everybody was all stoked on that. You know, would Donald Trump do that? You're fired. No, you just don't work with those type of people anymore. Right. You just if you don't like that phone service, this doesn't mean you should stop your marketing. You spent months, thousands and thousands of dollars a month. And then all of a sudden, because you're going on a fishing trip, you think that you should just stop your marketing. You just missing opportunities. How, what's your exit plan? When you're out of town plan, I mean, I just love Rich Dad Poor Dad. I know some of you call him, he went, he's a, he went crazy, and I, I, I don't know. I read his old stuff, but the guy's like, you're successful if the business runs without you. And I got convicted. I'm not lying. I'm like, if I disappeared for a little while, I can get off for a month or two, but can I get off for a whole year? That's a dream I have, a whole year. Like, I just disappear. You don't know where I'm at. I'm doing podcasts in some cave somewhere. Would my business be more successful and if I was running it? Think bigger. What the F? Think bigger. Create systems. And then on top of that, this dude, I could just see his eyes. He doesn't trust people. I'm telling you, you got to trust people. Yes, you will get burned. Yes, you will lose money. That is my number one calling, losing money. It bothers me. Seriously, especially if stewardship. But for you to go to the next level, for you to get bigger, for you to fulfill your dreams, whatever it takes... You've got to think bigger. How could I make this work? Who could cover me? I, I'm, I'm, I'm so honored to work with so many awesome entrepreneurs right now. I mean, I'm telling you, I, got, I, I can't. Every time I sit down with one of these entrepreneurs, I just get excited. You know, they're in two different markets. Or one flies in every other month and, and works in a I mean, I'm like, wow, they think bigger. Can you go international? Can you go global? How? I mean, you don't have to make this decision today, but for sure, you need to take off for a week. Who's going to man your phones? Who's going to go do your site visit? Maybe you need to let go and hire a property manager. Or maybe you need to let go and hire a part-time property manager. Or maybe you need to let go and just hire an 18-year-old to carry a phone for you. Let go. Trust people. Think bigger. It's time for you to hire an assistant. It's time for you to figure out virtual assistants. It's time for you to get coaching. It's time for you to think bigger. I'm telling you, the minute I start thinking bigger, how, how, how can I do it? Stuff just rains. Sometimes I just have to write it down, and I did this the other day. How do I determine that this land purchase is a, is a value, is a home run? And then I just start writing out, okay, appraisals, mentors, think bigger. I, I, I don't know how to evaluate land. But I always avoided it. That's the problem. And then one of these friends that reached out to me two years ago, man, I'm doing this big development off of I-35. It's going to be off the chain. I'm like, no, buddy, no, that's not me. You know, I'm just single family. I'm the savvy landlord. And now that dude's killing it. And I'm like begging that dude to coach me so I can do the same thing that he's doing. And I had to pull the trigger and I had to buy this land. I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but I'm going to think bigger. If this dude can do it, I can do it. He learned from somebody. Think bigger. I know it. I'm just just beating it into your head. You're going out of town. Don't stop your marketing. Create more systems. You must trust yourself, your mind, trust people. You'll never reach your potential. And I always say this. What's the worst thing that can happen? 
You lose a couple hundred dollars on an answering service. You're afraid to hire somebody else because they're going to ask you questions and you don't know how to answer them. Welcome to the club. That's why I love hiring virtual assistants. They fire back all the time with questions. How do you want this done? Where do you want this done? How do you want this? And I'm like, I, I, I don't know. And you just start writing and then you fail. And then you hire another VA and then you fail again. And then you hire a real employee that costs you $3,000 a month and you fail. And then you learn and then you create systems. And then now I can hire accountants. I can hire smarter people than me. I'm still figuring out how to hire better attorneys. It's trial and error. Or you learn from somebody else or you get referrals from someone you trust. Think bigger, move on. Okay, here's another one. Man, it's hard for me not to say names on this stuff because I just not, I'm not about names and I'm definitely not about tearing people down. But here's something that just someone just happened in my in my world and it stung my young friend, a young entrepreneur trying to go on his own and starts making decisions based on someone else. He thought he was going to partner with this person. Hey, let's get into to the game together. Let's buy this land and let's do this and let's do that. And here's the problem. If you're ever going to partner with somebody – Show me the money. Like, you've got to have enough balls to have a one-page agreement that says, I'm going to do this. Don't do anything without a commitment. I know this from my own experience as a young, I'm talking about 20 years ago, uh, investor slash I was involved in the club business, and I was going to open this club. And this dude, I I believe in you, Van Kalenberg. You're the greatest promoter. Uh, I've seen what you've done with these bands, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, whatever, dude. And he was making a ton of money. And then I was like, okay, let's, he's like, let's open a club together. He's like, I'll, I'll front you. I'll give you the, the sound and lights, the money. You just promote it and put it together and run it. No problem. No, I got no money. I'm broke. I had $1,200 to my name at that time. So this dude gives me the thumbs up. So I run around. I spend like a couple of weeks finding a venue, find a venue, rent this itch out, gave her my last $1,200 call my 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 investor my friend whatever you want to call this individual in your world come on down man come check this out and he walks through it he walks through the venue i don't like it i'm not gonna do it i sit and i was devastated i mean i'm talking beyond devastated and as a young person broke living in an apartment barely making it i'm not gonna do it and i was like what a dummy what a, I, I don't even like to, what a dumbass. What a dumbass. I am such a dummy. I put up all, I put up all this time, all this energy. And the dude said, no, that, see, my, my problem was, it was my fault. It was my responsibility. And I'm glad at that time I was madly in love with reading and, and growing as an entrepreneur that I just earned my stripes. I just got a college degree. I just went to two semesters. I did it right. That will never happen again. And I just saw one of my homeboys go through this same pain. And that's why it's on the radio show today. Don't go through that pain. Get your stuff together. Get a one page. I'm, you're going to front me 50000 and you're gonna, we're going to split this business. Whatever the terms may be, and I'm telling you, those terms are not going to be good or right at that moment. You're going to change. You're going to grow. I'm in some partnerships right now. It's just difficult. Just me in Oklahoma and, and my homie down there in Tennessee. I feel sometimes I don't feel like I'm contributing, but that's the deal. That's what's working. It's not easy. And you're going to change. Things are going to change. Maybe we need to hire a new person because you're working so much and that costs us more money. Things will change, but it's in writing. This is what you're responsible for. This is what I'm responsible for. Man up or woman up and get a commitment beforehand. I remember when I, when I was a young person and I apply this, this pastor came up to me and he's like, Stephen, we, you know, you're really good with kids and da, 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 you worked at Kennecuck summer camp and we'd love for you to help us with the youth group. Absolutely. I mean, I would love to volunteer. I mean, I got saved. That's how I came to know Jesus was through the youth group. And <laughs> I was like, all right. But I remember he's like, I need you to sign this piece of paper. And I was like, whoa, like a contract. Whoa. And I realized it was just a mental, physical thing that I'm committed. Am I committed to serving every Wednesday and Sunday at this time, right? I signed that piece of paper, but it made me commit. Next time you want to partner with somebody or a private lender, have them give you a term sheet, have them commit 
to you. You can do this. All right, here's a quick one. I just learned uh, in commercial. So uh, I'm buying, I'm telling you guys, I'm, I'm, I'm way out of my league here. Uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm excited and I'm also just peeing my pants every other day. Seriously, my wife has no idea why I got fever blisters. I know why. I'm trying to figure out what's <laughs> this new thing. What's the best and highest use of this land? See, I may have a vision like senior living or I may have a vision like this, a bike park in Midwest City. Come on. Can you hear me? It's beautiful. It's it's 20 feet in the air. It's a canopy, and there's a bunch of jumps. And if you like mountain biking like I do, you know what I'm talking about. It's got burns. Come on. You got you can do some manual. You, 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 it, it's a place where like-minded people come and ride bikes. It's, it's off the chain. But that's not that may not necessarily be the best use of that land at that time, economically, time-wise. And I've learned that. Just something real quick for you. If you get in the commercial, what's the What's the best and highest use? Here's something else I just learned the other day too. So, you know, I'm trying to help somebody and I'm like, this person needs to learn this. And that, this individual said, I already taught them that. (laughs) You may have taught your children how to do something, but they may not have received it. Think about it. You may have communicated to them integrity, but they may not have received it or some, you thought that they got that already taken care of. Don't leave it to chance is what I'm telling you. They may be trained, but they may not have received it. Make sure that it's understood. And so this is just in my own personal fit with my daughter. I saw something inside my daughter that I can tell uh, her relationships were not were not yielding really well and she was having some conflict and I was like Shanae I was like have you explained to her you know it's better to listen or have you explained yeah I've already told her all these things or she already knows them just assuming this is the real deal or they've received it don't assume that whoever has been already trained or taught something you need to <coughs> you need to verify that all right, I don't know if that means anything to you, but I, you know I can get all deep on it. But I, I want to move on to the next one. Got a free roof the other day. Yep, off the chain. Got a new crib. Bought, bought a new uh, asset. Thank you uh, to the to the people, the bird dog out there. Can't wait to pay you bird dog fee. Fifteen hundred dollars. Whoa, that's a bird dog fee. But it was a smoking deal. It's a hundred fifty thousand dollar house. Bang bang for about eighty eight. Not too bad. All right. It's going to cash flow about $500 a month. Man, I'm excited. But it needed a roof. And so I don't know if you know this trick, but I was hanging out with an investor. Have you ever heard of assignable benefits? And he was like, what's that? I was like, you can, you can get, you can get the, the seller to look into a claim and get a new roof. And I, it, it worked. It, I, I've done this many times. And he didn't believe me. And I'm like, let me show you how to do it. And it's real deep. I can get even deeper in it, but I'll just do it real quick. This is a quick podcast. But I talked to the seller. He didn't want to negotiate, but I got a free roof, and the roof is worth about eight to twelve thousand. It's a fifteen hundred square foot house, somewhere around there. I'm not sure. I haven't bought a roof in a little while. But the there was a hail claim. They never turned it in. The insurance company gladly accepted that insurance claim, got the right people on the team, and now I have a new roof for free. So really, I got the asset for eighty thousand and bought it, put a new roof on it. Man, it's really good to be in real estate. Whoo, I'm excited. I'm just telling you that assignable benefits. All right. So you may and that may be a negotiation technique. Maybe they want this specific number. Like this dude wanted eighty eight thousand. First of all, he wanted a hundred, but that's another day. I guess I could tell you that story later. But got him down to eighty eight, and then but it needed a roof. But he still got his eighty eight. And I got a roof. It worked out. You can do it. Anyway, hopefully this stuff helped you. Hopefully you'll grow through this process. Pray for your boy because I'm in the, I'm, I'm in the uncomfortable. I'm trying to come down to the to the radio show and try to make this happen. I don't, I don't know if I want to be stuck in a closet all the time. But I definitely want to help you and help you grow your business. Because I think the more we help each other, the more we grow together. And I want to grow. There's more to this life for you to be the very best that you can be. You can be the very best. Don't worry about what other people are saying. What's what's your potential? How hard can you, how high can you grow? 
What can you do? How could you make a legacy? How could you give back? Anyway, this is Steve Van Kallenberg. You tuned in to the Savvy Radio Show. Go to SavvyInvestors.com. Drop me a message. I hopefully inspired you to get off your couch and go out there and buy assets. Thanks for listening to the Savvy Radio Show. Glide online and listen to our other motivating episodes at SavvyRadioShow.com. Connect on Twitter at LandlordBook and always be buying assets. 